Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna be a Ruby Beast video because we're waiting on parts for Beast 3.0. Yes, we're waiting on some stuff from SNS Diesel. We're also waiting on something from Black Market. Yeah. We're also waiting on something from Black Market Performance. It has to do with the intake corn. So yeah, we're in a holding pattern. That's the thing. When you have new vehicles, sometimes you have to wait a little bit. And if you're looking at my hat right here, we're also waiting on some stuff probably coming in the spring i would say summer at least for us it's probably gonna be around summertime where we're gonna do some a big mod <laughs> big mod ramp content's not going away but we're gonna continue building our drive line on the ruby beast we're working our way from the front to the back if you saw the last video well the last two videos the first video was the rcv front axle shafts and then we went with the tom woods drive shafts front and rear and then today we're doing Yukon chromoly rear axle shafts and we're also putting new wheel liners on from American Adventure Lab. It's another weekend install at the JP shop. So what we have here guys are Yukon chromoly rear axle shafts for the Dana 44 Rubicon. I have all the information for this in the video description below. Thanks to our friends at East Coast Gear Supply. They hooked us up with these. Well, <laughs> they, uh, they helped us out with these. They didn't completely hook us up with these. I had to pay for them. but. Um, they've been a great uh, supporter of the channel whenever I need any information or if I need any products They usually have it in stock and they can get it to me within two days because we're here on the East Coast I believe they're in North Carolina, but we're gonna get to installing these We've removed them before when we did the gear swap So I really don't think we need to film all that But we'll probably do a sped up version of it and then uh, when we go to install them into the Jeep We are gonna we'll we'll explain and tell you the process, but I mean, these things come with everything you need They're basically uh, Like what like wiring plug and play you got your bearings here everything everything's here It's gonna slide right in you'll see and then we'll talk about them. We'll compare the stock axles to these back to back and I'll explain some of the features with the chromoly Yukon axle set axle shaft set when we get them out Now that Tracy and I have the axle shafts out, let's talk about these bad boys a little bit. These Yukon heavy duty chromoly 32 spline axle shafts are designed for the Jeep Rubicon JL and JT with the Dana 44 M220 axle housing. The axle shafts are comprised of 4340 chromoly alloy steel, which is ideal for highly stressed parts. The heat treating process they undergo creates a stronger shaft suitable for handling larger tires and the off-road abuse that we put the Ruby Beast through during our trips to the off-road parks in PA. The flanges are dual drilled, giving you a five x five and a five x five and a half bolt pattern. This Yukon kit comes with everything you need for the installation, new wheel studs, retainers, axle seals, axle bearings, and ABS rings. The axle bearings and ABS tone rings even come pre-installed by the factory. They offer options for non-Rubicon, Jeep, JL, JT, and older models as well. If you're interested in strengthening your driveline, give the JP shop a call.
we're just going to repeat that with all nine studs. Nine because we have two axle shafts. It would be eight since we've already done. Uh, well, I didn't. I, well, maybe they did say. Okay, all eight. We have eight left, guys. <laughs> now, one thing we would like to note is that you don't want to use your lug nut that you're going to normally use on your Jeep or whatever you're doing if you're reinstalling if you're installing new wheel studs. You don't want to use that because uh, this thing's this is off another JL. They're always doing wheel and tire upgrades. Cause this thing's spent. <laughs> that was spent. Look at there's some of the threads right there, probably. And another thing too is the, if the race gets stuck inside the axle tube, you just might need to pop that out. The one came out with the axle. The other one we had to do a little finagling to get out. Very little finagling. But yeah. Now the axles, the axle shafts are ready to go in the axle housing. We gotta clean it, put RTV on it. Oh yeah, clean it, RTV. A little bit of grease on the splines. Why would you want to put RTV right here? So the seal doesn't, it helps it slide in the hole better and it also helps it seal. Instead of just having a dry seal. No dry rides? Just using a little bit of brake clean to clean the axle tube. Before we slide the, the new new in there. Like we were talking about earlier, just putting a little bit of grease on the splines. That's uh, Tracy's method of not having to touch the actual grease itself. Just throw the grease tube on top of the axle shaft. <laughs> it works most of the time. <laughs> That's red Loctite. Yeah. That's actually better than the tube that we were using last time. <laughs> You're gonna put the four 18 millimeter nuts back on. Tracy, I can do that while you jump over to the other side if you want. I'm so letting the other side drain still. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we got a JP shop visitor. What's oh. up, Jesse? I think Jeep actually was, you know, doing something here. They put a hole right there so you can use a deep wall socket to tighten that nut right there. Touch it, I'll touch it. I can't see my finger. Is my finger out? Yeah, yeah, you're touching yeah, it. yeah, I'm touching it. But I don't know if I got it on camera. But yeah, that nut right there, you can put a deep well and get it to it right there. <laughs> and you'll notice that um, the Yukon rear axles actually have a spot for that one bolt that would go there. Um, from us taking these things <laughs> apart and taking the rear off of this and doing a lot of work on this Jeep, at one point, I'll blame myself, I probably forgot to put that back on there. So if your Jeep's equipped with it, you can still use it if you want to. I know they're on the front because we just did the front not that long ago and I remember putting them in, but must have forgot to put them on. You're just going to put your two 18 millimeter bolts back in for your caliber and you're, you're done. It's a wrap. You throw your tires on and we're probably just going to top off the rear diff and uh, the axle job is officially done. Pretty simple job if you want to do it yourself. But as always, if you want the experts to do it, bring it here to the JP shop. They'll get you taken care of. You can order all this stuff right through the JP shop and they will install it. One stop shop, I say that all the time, guys. Out here in Chester Springs, PA. Just ask Jesse. Oh yeah. Jesse's Jeep, he, he's always doing stuff here. Well, always here. <laughs> one important thing to note, guys, the axle shafts, you have a longer one and a shorter one. We have a long one and a short one. Your long one is gonna go on your passenger side. Your short one's gonna go on your driver's side. We didn't mention that when we were doing the installation, but make sure uh, you take note of it so you don't make that Mistake, because that would suck. You would get everything put together, and then you realize, oh, shit, we got a problem. There you go. Tracy's just double checking the torque. What was the torque spec for that? 59. 59? Yes, sir. So 59 for your axle, what do they call them? Axle retainment nut. There you go. 59 foot pounds for your axle retaining nuts. All right, guys, we got the axles in completely. We got all of our nuts and bolts torqued down, Loctite it with red Loctite, and uh, just ready to put the tires on. But before we do that, we're gonna be removing these bad boys and doing the fronts, but you might have to wait for another video for those guys. All right, so the, the axle video, the axle shaft video is pretty quick and simple. 
So we're gonna move on to, we are gonna install these rear wheel liners from American Adventure Lab. The thing is though, we're probably not gonna do a full blown tutorial. We're just gonna probably do the installation and give you any tips and tricks along the way because that's what we do. So we got all the hardware separated, your nut certs, your quick releases, your different sizes and bolts, and then your retaining clips, the new ones with the kit. Um, the passenger side, I'll show you a couple things that's different from the driver. You'll see you have three holes right here. The quick release mount will go behind here like so, and you're gonna use the proper hardware to install that. So we're on the passenger side right now. I have installed all 13 nut certs with our nut cert tool. There is plenty of videos on the internet showing you how you can do it at home without a nut cert tool, but I recommend you just go ahead and fork out maybe the $20 for the tool, because- Arbor Yeah, exactly. A lot of, lot of uh, aftermarket uh, components use nut certs and you can use nut certs if you're a fabricator making your own stuff so the next thing is putting these putting these brackets into place and putting the fender fenders on themselves and we also cleaned up this area so it wasn't as dirty and Steve's over here making a ruckus Steve, how many nut certs do you have for this side? I have 14 in my pocket. <laughs> but it's 13. I think maybe they gave us an extra one. Maybe. I don't no, know. No, I already took one of yours. Oh. So you have 13. So I have 13. Oh, so we're good. Yeah. I'm going to show you we got our 13 nut certs in. What I end up doing is I use these panels actually to figure out exactly where the nut certs go. The only one that you're not going to be able to use that panel for is this one right here because that's actual bolt that bolts to the fender. And Tracy's on the other side here, bolting the fender back up. And here's the bolt that uh, the nuts yeah. that Steve was just yeah, talking we, about. Yeah, we got to somehow. It's definitely strong, much more stronger than those factory plastic clips going in there. But as you can see, it just mounts up in the factory locations where we just put all the nut certs in. And I'll show you the hardware. This is what it looks like right here. So you're just basically putting this on there. You got these two little alignment tabs that will actually mount into your fender or insert into your fender. There's two alignment pins on the fenders. One there, one there. You actually just have to snip those bad boys off with um, some snips. You're not gonna need them. So I'm just using some of the old hardware off of the RC rough country fender liners to just hold these in place until we get a few of these started and we're gonna pull them out. But there's two holes here that you're gonna to use to align everything. I got all 12 of them started. You guys are gonna notice that there's one more right down here behind this support bracket that's gonna be a nightmare to get to. But Tracy's gonna show you what you did on this side. You notice a lot of it's missing now. <laughs> yeah, I, there's a brace that goes from here across and then to here. But I cut that out and then it gave me a lot more room to get my hand up in there. And then I got that screw in there. And it's up in there, yeah. yeah. This side, this is broken, unlike Steve's side, but it ain't going anywhere, so we're good. Why, why is it broken? Did I break it? Uh, this fender was actually like... I know, I smashed it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it I was smashed wrong. this fender at Rouse Creek. I think it was Rouse Creek. Yeah, Rouse Creek. I think it was Trail 11. We, uh, we hit an embankment with it. Oh, is that when you jacked up the mirror? No, 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 that was at uh, Reading Famous Outdoors. Oh. So, yeah, it's actually, I think this is, it's definitely really sturdy. It feels a lot more sturdier than it did before with the yeah, plastic. Yeah, it was just plastic. Yeah, so, and I, and I think we're coming to the, the end. I think you're just we're just putting one more bracket in here, then it's all quick release after that. Yeah. The nice thing with American Adventure Lab, they offer different types of powder coating. You can do custom powder coating, different colors, or you can just go raw aluminum. I chose to go with the black powder with a textured finish. So I think it looks sweet. And then we, we went with uh, raw there. So you can see the, the emblem for American Adventure Lab. And that red. Thought about it, but I didn't, I, I, I don't know, you know. I think I, it looks it good. It would have tied in. Yeah, the red, red, red definitely would have tied, tied in. There you go.
go. She's all cut. Yay. And then you can reach in there now. Reach in there and get it. And you can get that tool up in there. Too. Nice. I'm just going to tighten up this side. Tracy's going to finish doing what he needs to do on that side. I'm almost done. I know Tracy's ready. <laughs> Tracy's pulling the quick releases now and we're he assembled. We hope this is the passenger side. <laughs> I had not planned to do like a full blown video on this, but I didn't see anything on YouTube. So we're trying to give you some, so we're trying to give you some tips for this install. So you're gonna use a five millimeter Allen to insert, insert the quick release bolts, I guess you can say. And you'll feel it won't go any further in the lock. I like it. What do you think? I like how it covers that pinch weld up as well. You're gonna put the top in just on the other side of this pinch weld and you'll feel it seed into place or fall into place. And then once you get a couple started, it's a lot easier. Hang on. Cool. Definitely fits in there nicely. Two more. And the reason why it makes that clicking noise, it's got a, a hump that it goes over. Gotcha. Sort of locks it in. Yeah. There. What's really nice about this, guys, you, you, you literally take out one, two, six. six. Okay. <laughs> All right, got it. I want to show them. One here, 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 and then two in the center and then your whole liner comes out. So if you want to clean in there, as you saw how dirty it was behind there, if you want to clean back there, you can. And I also like how this is definitely a much better support for your fender, um, but that could be, that could be twofold. If it's too tight and it's, it's, you could literally damage your, your fender, it might rip your fender off because it's that much stronger of a support. But I like it, it looks really good. Tracy, you want to do the front ones? <laughs> we'll do we'll do the front ones in another video but this side same basic principle guys it's the same thing one thing we forgot to mention during the install was on the passenger side you have one that has three bolts driver side there's just two for this bracket right here for your quick release hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you're stopping by for the first time make sure you smash tap do something to that subscribe button turn on all those notifications make sure you check out the jpshop.net for all your truck and Jeep accessories and installations. They do it all here, guys. Look, we got a CJ over there. We got a power, don't power. Don't show them the CJ. Don't show them the CJ. They, <laughs> they, do, they do it all though. They do it all. That thing's, I think it's, it's living here. But anyway, the power stroke, which is right there. They're doing some uh, bed restoration on that. We got a JK that was on fire and it's completely the JP, JP shop restored it. If you would have saw, I should have filmed a little bit before. And now the after. They're still working on it though. It's almost done. Make sure you check them out. Allbeastprojects.com. That's me. That's our merch. There's more information on there. Our partners. East Coast Gear Supply for being a supporter of the channel and helping us beef up our driveline for the summer. That's basically what we're doing right now in the downtime while I'm waiting for Ram parts. We're beefing the Jeep up so when we go wheeling this summer, we're all set. We don't have to worry about anything. So keep your eye out for us at Rouse Creek and the AOA and other Jeep events here on the East Coast. Oh, American Adventure Lab. I'll have all the information for them as well. I'll shut up. Have a good one, guys.